I could ever do one of those what cameras do I have videos I feel like it would just take too long I feel like they get kind of boring I don't know maybe I can find an interesting way to do that but yeah I'm just I'm just not feeling it right now maybe sometime in the future but not now All right, so hey guys and welcome back now today we are talking about the Yashica Electra 35 and how it did such a fantastic job at letting me down. Okay, so welcome back. I know it's been a while, I apologize. Uh, I've just been really busy lately between work and planning Japan, which is gonna happen in the next couple weeks. There's been a lot going on, which is why there's been such a delay in posting these videos. So I apologize. I'm gonna try and get back on a regular schedule. The good news is I have about five rolls of film that I'm currently developing. So I'm hoping that as I edit and post those, I will continue to record new content and then be able to put that out on a much more regular basis. So that's the plan. Again, I'm sorry for the delay, but hopefully that won't happen again. So let's talk about what happened. Now there are some cameras that you can get away with having little to almost no foam in your light seals with. Is it recommended? Absolutely not. But at times it is possible. With most 35mm cameras, you have a slot that goes around the door as well as on the sides here. And what happens is that groove cuts down and up. And as you close your camera door, that door slides in between those grooves and snaps shut. So it is difficult for that to happen, but it happens. It varies between different cameras as well as different models, different makes. Or in the case of this one, the door is loose. So I'm not sure if that's just because it is missing the light seals. There is several different makes of this. There, this is the Electra 35 GS. There's also the GSN, the Electra 35, the Electra 35G, the Electra 35 GT, the Electra 35 GS, the GSN, and the GTN. So they made this camera for a while. Well, I had shot this camera previously and I know the light seals are in bad shape, but I didn't think they were bad enough to need a repair. I thought they were decent enough to be able to shoot with it. I have put a roll of color through this camera before. It was just a cheap roll of Fuji 200, and that roll had issues. Not as many issues as this roll did, but it did have issues. What happened is somehow or another when I was winding it, it didn't wind all the way up in the canister. So I was kind of nervous shooting it again. That was early on when I was shooting film. I wasn't sure maybe if there was something wrong with the wind mechanism or if I just done something wrong. It was really weird, not sure exactly what happened. But so I opened the film door before it was all the way in the canister exposing the roll. So a lot of those were blown out. There were a lot of photos that came out fine with no issues, no light leaks at all. So I just assumed that it was because I opened the film door prior to the film being all the way into the roll. I have found out though that that was not the problem, apparently. That was a nice surprise. So since shooting this second roll of black and white, I have now discovered that yes, in fact, there is a light leak in this camera. So I believe I shot black and white with this camera. I think it was HP 400. If not, I'll post it up right there. We are gonna go over some of the specs of the Electra 35 
what makes it good, what makes it bad, all kinds of things like that. Uh, and then we will look at some of the photos that I took with this camera and give you a little more information on how they came out. A little bit about this camera. Of course, it is a rangefinder style camera. It is a fixed 45 millimeter lens with a 1.7 aperture. It's a leaf shutter, which makes it really quiet, which is perfect for street photography. It has exposure indicator arrows in the viewfinder and as well as on the top of the camera in case you're mounting it on a tripod. And these will flash either red if you are over one over 500th shutter speed or yellow if you are below 130th shutter speed. Let's take a look at the viewfinder really quick. And let's just put that out there. Perfect. Let's make it bigger. Awesome. So this is the viewfinder of the Electra 35. As you can see, it has a split image focusing in the center, and then you have your guidelines of what your frame size is inside that viewfinder. Now the viewfinder does show more than the actual frame size, which is great for street photography. It allows you to follow your subject into the frame and kind of place it a little more accurately where you want to, and not have to worry about just firing right as it pops into the frame. You can guide it in and make sure you're getting exactly where you want. At the top, you'll have your indicator arrows, which will blink yellow or red course depending on your exposure and that pretty much sums up the viewfinder so let's go ahead and minimize that done perfect so the shutter speeds as I said are from 1 over 500th of a second all the way down to 30 seconds if you want to do long exposures it is a aperture priority camera meaning you set the aperture to whatever you want and then the camera will automatically pick the shutter speed that best works with that so for your aperture you have 1.7 all the way to f16 so the minimum focusing distance for this camera is 2.6 feet and the viewfinder is nice and bright as you already saw. What's great about it is it's extremely quiet. There's actually a lot of times where I'm using this camera and I've clicked and I have to second guess myself kind of to see if I actually taken the shot because it's loud around me and you just can't hear it, you don't feel it because it's just that good. So the Electro 35 was made from 1966 to 1977. This is the GS model, which was made from 1970 to 1973. I've looked up a lot of reviews on this camera, seen a lot of things. I actually have a few friends who own them. Um, some people refer to it as the poor man's Leica, which I guess I can kind of see. It's a little bit bigger, bulkier than a Leica. Uh, it's, I think it's a little lighter. It's not built quite as solid as a Leica camera. That is one of my issues with this camera is that it's a little bit bigger. It has a higher profile than most of my 35 millimeter cameras. I've seen a few people say that they've had issues with this camera uh, working properly and things like that, or they just don't last long. I haven't had that issue. I actually just bought another one. Um, I got it for a good deal. I'm not stockpiling or hoarding or anything like that. Uh, I got it for 10 bucks, so come on, I had to get it. I think that's just the 35 or maybe the 35G, but I don't know anybody personally who's had any issues with it. I've never had problems with it myself, of course, other than the light leak issue. It functions properly. It exposes great. Uh, all the pictures that came out with it are spot on. Never had any issues with it over or under exposing. And the other downside to this camera is that the exposure is automatic. You can only select your aperture and it does not have an exposure lock. So for example, if I was taking a portrait of somebody who was backlit, maybe the sun was setting behind them or something like that, with a normal camera, it's gonna read a lot of that light and your subject is gonna be kind of in shadow. With exposure lock, I could expose for something that is in the shadows, hold down that shutter, pull up, recompose my shot, and take that picture with the exposure being set for the shadows that I picked over here. That way my subject would be better lit. With this camera though, you don't have that setting, which means if you decided to take a picture of someone who's backlit, it's most likely gonna be underexposed some, depending of course on where the exposure is picked from. I would assume it's about a 60-40 split between center exposure and the exterior exposure, but I'm not quite sure. I need to figure that out. The last downside is the battery for this camera. So they don't make the battery for this camera anymore. In order to use it, you have to buy an adapter and four LR44 batteries. Or of course you can do what I did and spend uh, $13 on the alkaline battery placement that they make. $13, that's what I said. It's a $13 battery, in case you're wondering. Lastly, we're gonna go over this camera, where everything's located, all the buttons, dials, all that kind of stuff, so you're familiar with how this camera works. At the front of the lens, you have your bulb, auto, and flash settings. Behind that, you have your apertures, which go from 1.7 all the way to 16. After that is your focus ring. You have two black dials on either side of the lens, which makes it really easy to focus your camera as you're moving around. It's really nice and helps you make sure you don't get your focus mixed up with changing your aperture. 
Also right there you have a little lever, which is your timer. It also shows you your zone focusing, which is great to have. Moving up to the top of the camera, you have your rewind lever, which is at the far left corner. This camera does not have a hot shoot. It does have a flash mount, which is located on the top of the camera, but the flash sink is actually on the left hand side of the body of this camera. Sliding over, you have your exposure setting. So if you wanted to mount this on a tripod, you could, and you wouldn't have to look through the viewfinder to see if your exposure was accurate. Sliding over, you have your ASA dial to set your ISO. Next is your shutter button, and then it does have a lock button so that you don't waste the battery or press the shutter in your bag or anything like that. And then lastly is your film advance. The film advance on this camera is great. I really like it. It's really nice and smooth. It's super easy and quick. Um, I just love how it feels as you're rewinding that camera. On the back side, you have your viewfinder and your battery check. Then lastly, like I said, is your film sync, which is on the left-hand side. We're going to look at some of the pictures and see how it worked out. Of course, you're going to see a lot of light leaks, so uh, bear with me. These are the ones that I took with the first roll that I put through it. Um, pictures of some coffee bags. Colors came out great on that. Again, I shot Fuji 200-speed film with this camera for the first roll that I shot. Uh, some coffee cups. No light leaks, no issues there at all. There is this one here. That is the roaster. Definitely a light leak there. This was late night. Uh, that place is really dark. I don't even like shooting there with my digital camera just because the lighting is that bad. Um, but as you can see, it handled decently well. Same place, again, not bad at all. Uh, the exposure is spot on. Kim does a great job in there. This is one where I would prefer to underexpose by a stop or two, just to kind of even more exaggerate that difference in color there. You could do it in post as well, but I really just like how that light comes right down through uh, between that highway. Now these were down at the pier at the beach. Exposed great, still a little bit of color in that sky so it wasn't blown out. Um, the shadows look great, the colors are nice. Again here, sun's rising right there. I still have detail on those shadows along the edge of the bridge. Still a few clouds up there in that upper left corner. So yeah, it does a great job with that. Again here, as you can see, no issues with light leaks whatsoever. So this is that spot I talked about in a previous video that I wanted to go back for sunrise and sunset. This is sunset, uh, the light is coming through that upper window and it's casting this big white box on that back wall. So as you go up this escalator, that person is just kind of silhouetted in that square going up and down that. And this is really the shot I wanted. This girl's looking down on her phone or something. Uh, you can see her hairline there and it's just, just the perfect silhouette. Um, and it just, uh, it just blew it out. But that's a shot I really wanted to get. Um, frame wise, I didn't really frame it right. I should have moved closer. Uh, of course, then I would have been in the middle of the street. I can crop it and adjust it though, but that shot's done. So here's another one. You can see where that white box is as people go up and down. I wish there was a little more life around here and there's people sitting on those chairs outside. I'm not sure why I took this one. I think it might have been an accident or something like that because I chopped off the guy's head in there. Again, this little old lady sitting on the side of the street, reading, blown out. This guy on the side, sitting down, blown out. This one, blown out. A little really grainy on this one. Don't know what that's all about. That looks weird. Just leaving the parking garage. Would have been kind of a cool shot. Nope. So this one is nice. I should have gotten a little closer with the shot, but I wanted to kind of get those puddles uh, leading up to them walking by. So I think, I think this is actually the only shot that came out on this roll. Uh, pretty spot on, actually. The shadows are great. I haven't edited this at all yet. The shadows are great. The highlights are everything. It's exposed. Spot on. No light leaks anywhere in the photo. I'm actually pretty happy with how this one came out. So for me, I really like to create that depth of field. So I would like to get higher and kind of shoot down a little more of those trees, and kind of bring the distance between my subject and those trees closer together and kind of frame him a little bit better. But we're shooting with a 45 millimeter lens and I snapped it off at the perfect moment as they were looking up at the building across the street. I think they're painting it or something. Pretty happy with how that shot came out. Nope, nope, blown out, blown out, no good. Garbage, garbage blown out. Oh, here's a shot of Travis. That would have been nice if it wasn't garbage. <sighs> that's basically it. So that's that roll and how those photos came out. Final thoughts, it's a great rangefinder camera for street photography. Uh, the colors on it are really nice. The viewfinder is amazing. It's really big and bright. The lens on this at a 1.7 gives you just enough to get that book if you need to, but it also goes all the way up to f16, which is great as well. The downsides, like I said, it has no exposure lock. Uh, it's a little bit bigger profile. And then lastly, the exposure only goes up to one hover five hundredth of a second. Uh, I would prefer if it went up to at least a thousand. So that is kind of a bummer if you're shooting in broad daylight, but you still can work around it. Uh, I would just prefer to have a little bit more room with the exposure. I would absolutely recommend this camera hands down for anybody who wants a great rangefinder at a decent price, depending on which model you get. I've seen them go from anywhere from $20, $30, all the way up to about a hundred, 110 maybe. I wouldn't spend over $100 on this camera 
Uh, I just don't think it's worth it. They're pretty easy and common to find. It's kind of like a Canon A1. You see them pretty frequently. So I think you're just better off waiting until you find a good deal on it. So that is gonna wrap it up for this video. As I said, I apologize in the delay for getting this out, but I'm hoping to be on a more regular schedule now and I have a lot more coming your way. Like I said before, I have five rolls of film that I'm developing right now. So I should have pretty regular content for the next several weeks. So again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please make sure that you like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Leave a comment down below if you wanna chat. Uh, if you like, didn't like, anything like that, any input you have is greatly appreciated. So again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.